Finally, we are ready to start coding our first plot. This will be a stack plot showing the combined debt growth over time for three different regions. Of course, this won't be real data, just random numbers. We'll start by importing the necessary modules, and then we'll use NumPy to generate our pseudo-random data in the form of ND arrays. And then finally, we'll use matplotlib in order to actually plot that data. I'm working here in a Conda environment called Learning MPL, which has matplotlib and all of its dependencies installed. I've also created a new Python file called plot1.py that we can work in. We'll start by importing pyplot. Import matplotlib.pyplot as plt. We're not going to rely on pyplot exclusively, but we do need it to grab our initial figure and axis objects. And we'll also import numpy as np. Now, let's set the random seed so that we get the same pseudo random output each time we run the program. We can do this with np.random.seed. And I'll give it a value of 444. Next, we have to generate the data to plot. Let's create a new variable called rng, and that will store the result of np.arange, and we'll pass in 50. This will be a one-dimensional nd array counting from 0 to 49 inclusive. Now, let's create another variable called rnd. For this, I want to create a 2D nd array containing three one-dimensional nd arrays. Each of those arrays should contain 50 numbers from 0 to 9 inclusive. That function call looks like this. np.random.randint. 0, 10, 10,size equals, then the tuple 3, rng.size. This is the data that will actually be plotted along the y-axis. We'll create one more nd array to represent the year labels along the x-axis. This one should be identical to the rng array, but with 1950 added to each element. We can do this by simply adding 1950 to the existing nd array, just like this. Before we start plotting, I want to print the result of adding rng plus rnd to the console. This is the data that will be plotted along the y-axis of the stack plot, and having those nd arrays on screen is going to help me to explain how the stack plot works later on. To start plotting, we need two of matplotlib's objects, the figure and the axes, which is contained inside of the figure. We don't use pyplot for much because we're taking the stateless approach, but we can use it to generate those objects. To do that, let's create two variables called fig and axe and grab those objects with plt.subplots, passing in a tuple of 5,3 for the fig size. This fig size represents how large the figure should be on screen. Now that we have the figure and axes objects, we can start adding to the axes, which is the actual stack plot we'll see on screen. To create the stack plot, we can call the stack plot method on our axe object. First, it needs a 1D array to populate the x axis, and so I'll pass in our years variable. It also needs a 2D array to plot along the y axis. This will be rng plus rnd. Basically, this will increment the first element in each subarray in rnd by 0, then the second element in each by 1, then the third by 2, all the way until the last element is incremented by 49. We'll see this sum printed to the console, which will make things a little bit more clear later on. Finally, this method needs a labels argument. So let's write labels equals, and then a list containing East Asia, Eurasia, 
and Oceana. And that's the most difficult line of code in this entire program. Next, we can set some other properties of the axes object. We can set the title of the axes with set underscore title, and I'll pass in the string combined debt growth over time. We can also give it a legend with the legend method, and we need to pass in a location for that. Let's say upper left. I also want to give this plot a Y label, which we can do with the set Y label method. I'll pass in the string total debt. This will be displayed along the vertical axis. Next, we need to set the upper and lower limits for the years displaying along the X axis. This will ensure that our actual graphic is limited to just the year data that we're working with. To do this, we can use the set underscore xlim method, and this will take both an xmin and an xmax. The xmin should be the first element in our years array, which we can access as if it were a list in Python, with square bracket notation. I'll say years, and then in brackets, zero. For the xmax, we want the last element, which is years bracket negative one. Great, our data is plotted. The last thing we have to do is clean up the figure, which will remove any extra white space. We can do that with the tight underscore layout method, which we call directly on our figure object instead of the axes. Now, because we're not running this in any sort of interactive mode, we have to say plt.show in order to actually tell PyPlot to show our plot on screen. I will run this program, and we get our plot. We see it contains everything we'd expect, our titles, the label, the years along the x-axis, and our stack plot. But how exactly does this stack plot work? To answer that question, let's look at the ND array that was printed to the console. This ND array contains three sub one-dimensional arrays, one for each region in the plot here. The first array starts with a three, and so the first plot point representing the blue part of the graph should be three units from the bottom of the y-axis. The second array starts with eight, but that doesn't mean that the next point representing the orange graph starts at eight. Rather, it starts eight from the previous point, which is actually 11. That's why it's called a stack plot, because each data point stacks on top of the previous. Finally, the last array starts at five, and so the last point representing the green region starts at 16, or eight plus three plus five. This pattern continues for every x value in the plot. Just to show that this is accurate, I'm going to move over to my plot on screen, and I'll use the zoom tool, which is this little magnifying glass. I'll draw a small box around the leftmost region of the plot, which will resize the entire window to that plot region, effectively zooming in. If I hover my mouse over the first data point for each color, you can see in the bottom right corner the y value of my mouse coordinate. Hovering over the first blue point shows 3, the first orange point shows 11, and the first green point shows 16, just as we'd expect. We can use the other tools down here to pan around the graph, change between previous views, configure the spacing in the window, and even save a PNG file of the plot. 